Are you, how are you seeing the automotive market evolve? Have you, have you gotten inquiries from the commercial mark, market space? A- absolutely. I think, well, let's, I want to break that kind of into two pieces because sure. I think the market evolution itself has been really important for us. Uh, and people who are familiar with Bornware might have heard of our charging forward strategy, which we launched back in 2021. And that really set three pillar targets for how we were going to grow electrification from organic growth mergers and acquisitions, and then kind of tailoring our portfolio with some dispositions of business. And we have now delivered on all of those, and our strategy board said, okay, that's great, but actually we like the charging forward name. We're going to keep it. We're just going to create new targets and push them out till 2027. So we're building on that success now uh, with, with additional targets. But if you look at when we set that first group of targets where we thought the market was going to go, I think in um, in the 2030 time frame, we were in sort of like the 20 low 20s uh, percentage of EV adoption. Now, if you look at where most industry analysts think we're going to be by 2030, the number is much closer to 48 percent. Right. So it's uh, mm-hmm. everything that we were doing before. It just reinforced one: you're on the right track, and two: you probably should be moving faster. Let's go. So it's really uh, kind of put the pressure on us to try and keep up with the market and grow. Uh, you know, of course, we always want to grow a little bit faster than the market. So if the market's growing like that, we got to be growing <laughs> even faster to stay ahead of it. Right. Um, and I think the the second part of the question was CV CV space specifically. Uh, we definitely have seen a, a lot of indis- uh, a lot of activity there. We have a really exciting. Uh, product on the motor side that's going to be coming out. I can't speak about specific customers, but uh, a new motor that will be coming out in the near future that's going to go into a lot of um, full-size commercial vehicles. And we really see that and that part of the market has matured a lot in their own requirements as well, trying to think through, you know, do you need one really large machine that runs the whole thing that replaces your combustion engine? Or could you maybe get away with a few smaller machines that are more affordably priced? What's the what's the balance there? Mm-hmm. Um, and we've seen a lot of shifts in thinking. And hopefully, this new product, when it comes out, you know, you guys will tear it down and tell us we did a good job. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I, I, I we're we're really proud of it. And we think that that's going to be a nice market entry. And at the same time, as we grow, past car volume is definitely moving faster right now than the commercial vehicle volume. So it's still, I think, a little bit early for that. But that's something where we definitely still see future growth. Well, we'd love to tear one down. When do we get one? Uh, I, well, <laughs> we'll have to work that out. I think it, it, it needs to have half a, a year. Or yeah, a year? something like that. Half something, a year to a year, something like that. That sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll look for that. All right. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Let's just show up on your porch. We love to tear stuff down around here. Um, yeah, the targets are moving fast. It wasn't that long ago I was in an advanced engineering group looking at what's electrification look like in the future and we probably need an advanced engineering project in that in that area, you know. That was, you know, like a decade ago. It wasn't maybe for some people that are younger, that's a long time. For me, it's nothing. <laughs> a decade ago, come on. You are just starting to think about it in advanced engineering, and now it's everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I, just speaking of the timeline piece, uh, in my own time at BorgWarner, so I started in 2019. Um, in 2020-ish, I... Uh, took over a group that had just formed doing advanced systems engineering in the BU. And our ver- one of our first projects was to create a new high efficiency IDM. A product based off of that IDM just had its SOP. So if you think about that, it's only 2023 right. now. Right. We went from advanced systems engineering to a concept to something that was good enough to quote and then quote from good enough to quote to good enough to industrialize to in a customer vehicle in the span of three years. Right. It's really much faster than any other product cycle that I've ever been involved with in the automotive industry, you know, by far. And, and, you know, we'll talk about challenges in the EV market. For sure, the timeline's got to be right up there. I mean, you know, most companies that I've ever worked at, they've got like some sort of four-phase development plan where you go from what you just described, an advanced engineering prototype idea to production tools are cut, and you're, you're, you're coming off the line with these parts. And because production tools are so expensive, you don't want to kick those off before you've built a couple of rounds of prototypes. But is, 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 are, are those 
levels of prototypes still, are you still able to get those into the product development plan or, or do you have to cut some of that out to meet timing? I think cut it out isn't, isn't the approach. I think the way we're okay. trying to do it is sort of apply speed and agility, but in a, in a thoughtful way. So it has reinforced the importance of modeling and okay. trying to shift as much as we can forward with the modeling. And I think we also used to hold ourselves to a higher, sta a higher standard of production intent process. And so I think what we're finding is if your modeling is really good, you might be able to pick a, produ a prototype production process that's a little bit shorter, still do your test, still get your learning. There's nothing that, that helps you learn. Even today, there's still nothing that helps you learn quite as good as a true part. But is there a way to learn enough theoretically up front that you can compensate for the production process that you used, still get your part, and then still get to SOP on time? And so I think how we, how we prototype is changing and also how we model is significantly changing. Okay. Understood. Yeah, it's interesting.